Hello my love, welcome back to our off-grid, shaping up to be an actual homestead in rural Ireland here. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited to catch up with you because I have so many things to update you on. I feel like it's been a couple of weeks of lots of really exciting things beginning, starting, springing into action around here and so let's bring you up to speed. Just made myself a turmeric latte. I feel like it's the perfect drink for this time of year. It's like raining outside today even though we've had a lot of sunshine lately it's been absolutely stunning over the last week uh, but it's raining again today for the first time it actually feels really cozy but it still is spring and i feel like a turmeric latte because it's like a sunny color yet it's warming it kind of just feels perfect and spring like it doesn't feel too wintry anyway so i have some exciting things and then i actually have a really sad story as well um we experienced kind of well you'll understand when i explain it but Kind of our first loss here. Oh, okay, so anyway, we'll start with some of the fun things around here. One exciting thing is that our hens have started laying. Yay! Oh, yay our hens. I just love them so much and it just feels so beautiful to enjoy the bounty of their eggs. The first little eggs that they laid were teeny tiny and just so sweet. Um, not sweet to taste, you know what I mean, adorable sweet. And so I've been just using eggs in all manner of ways now. Such is the life of a homesteader in spring and I just feel so <laughs> happy to be like, yay, we're doing it now. So um, I've been making a lot of sourdough crepes because it's a great way of using up some of my sourdough starter to keep it really refreshed and vigorous. I find the more often you use it and use it right down and then feed it back up again, the better it is. And my family love these sourdough crepes. So that's been a great use of all of the eggs we have now. Tartars and stratas, that's quite a typical staple for us. The thing about these eggs is that their yolks are so orange, so they make just the most beautiful, sunny looking baked goods and things. So that's been really lovely. I've been really enjoying witnessing nature just come to life and really looking for the new things as spring unfolds around our homestead and just the land around our area as well. One of the things that Kayvan and I really like looking out for are the wildflowers and we're starting to get to know some of the species and varieties that we see around and the thing that just, I feel like yellow is the theme. <laughs> I've got my turmeric latte we've got our really orangey yellow egg yolks and the primroses oh my goodness the wild primroses make me smile every single morning so when I get up in the morning I get out of the caravan I'm always first up first out but I walk around the side of the house and in front of the front door there's this kind of embankment up there's a dry stone wall and then an embankment up and the place is just covered in these primroses just a few appeared at first several weeks ago and it the whole place is literally carpeted with these primroses now and I just feel so lucky so fortunate isn't nature a gift isn't it just oh like, is there any purpose to that primrose? I mean, I'm sure there is in nature, right? Don't, don't correct me on this, but is there any purpose other than just to bring joy to our lives? It's just so delightful. We've been really enjoying those and just noticing all of the changes as we walk through our land and through the local area on a daily basis. There's something new to spot, something new to appreciate, and I just... Oh, I can't tell you how grateful I am for it all because it has been part of my dream. That's why, you know, this is my dream life, right? It's been part of my dream for such a long time and I'm just savouring it. So, lamb update. For those of you who have been following along, you'll know that we've had various lambs appearing on our property. <laughs> There are some very naughty lambs that like to break out of their field that um, our friend and neighbour owns. Um, 
<laughs> there's just been no shortage of sheep shenanigans around here lately. Come see what's out here. <laughs> so it would appear that we are co-parenting, co-shepherding <laughs> this little flock now. <laughs> Aren't they sweet? Sheepies, 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 sheepies. So those of you who might remember Mischief, Mischief has since returned to the flock and has been staying with the flock, which has been lovely. Although the fl whole flock have appeared at various different times. And then we also have had this little chap who my daughter called Hello, Dandelion. Are you wanting to come in? Hello. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is very cute. Oh, he's sniffing your hand. Oh, okay. What are you guys up to? Oh, wait. What are you guys doing? He was here for a good few days, and more on that in just a bit. Hi, can I help you? Are you lost? Now that spring is finally here and in full swing, we had some just stunning weather. We were really sport with it. It felt so good for the soul because we'd had so much rain and cold weather and wind for so long that to have just genuine like warmth and sunshine felt just like oh you know when it touches like an inner part of you somehow and so we just have been using the opportunity to get out and explore the coastline along here and you can see us out enjoying a day together being tourists <laughs> in the area why not it just has felt really really lovely to kind of come out of our shells a bit more homestead news is that we've been planting again but this time something a little bit more useful than asparagus here he comes the precious cargo <laughs> what are we planting today sweet how many no what Of potatoes. potatoes! Yay! That is a staple crop I can get behind. <laughs> new trout. <laughs> Gotta have a new tool, let me see. Are you wearing the high vis because you have to be safe when using a new tool? Absolutely. How does it feel to be actually planting something? Something that we might be able to eat <laughs> this year, not within three years, like the asparagus. <laughs> Will, we're gonna have a bounty crop of potatoes, I've decided. Yay. I think potatoes, onions, and carrots are the things that I'm most excited to grow because that's what we use the most in the kitchen. So being able to provide at least a good chunk of that would feel, would feel really cool. What are you most excited to grow? Probably garlic, actually. Yeah? yeah. We didn't get any in the ground though in time. October. Oh. Sign of somebody who uh, <laughs> doesn't do any work. Pristine gloves. <laughs> For all those people out there that comment that I don't do anything. They're right. Oh. <sighs> 
Look at that. So, Dandelion the Sheep, and this is one of our more sad updates, actually. So the flock had <laughs> broken into the field next to us, which isn't ours, uh, and they were in there, and the farmer came to get them, and then the next day Dandelion appeared again, so he was the first one to appear, first of all, when you saw my daughter with him there. He appeared again, I let the farmer know, then he disappeared, then he came back, and it was this kind of thing of him going off coming back for several days in a row and one morning he was out there munching the grass and I just see him through our caravan bedroom window there which is just so lovely <laughs> and I just really like having them around to be honest um it's it's no hardship at all when they <laughs> break into the into our fields and our neighbor's fields there and I saw him in the morning and I thought I better let um our friend know and as soon as I thought that he disappeared which is it's almost like he knows, right? So I thought, well, I'll wait until he appears again because he'll need to know where exactly um, this little lamb is. And I didn't see him, didn't see him. And I said to my husband and my daughter, keep an eye out for Dandelion. Didn't see him. And I just, I started to get a bit of a bad feeling. And I said to my family, I feel like something's happened to him. And they're like, don't be silly. This lamb disappears all the time. We've had other sheep on our property who have disappeared and come back. And he's probably just gone off. He's probably returned to the flock. And I just had this feeling. And then come late afternoon, I said, no, I can't ignore this anymore. You know, when you just, I think, you know, it's like a woman's intuition. I just had this instinct and so I put on my wellies and I climbed over the fence into that field and it's quite hard to say and I found him and he unfortunately had passed away so that was really sad and <laughs> you could see that I'm like still sad about it now and even though this was over a week ago now I cried my eyes out I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you just seeing this sweet little lamb um, and I know he's not ours and it's not really our loss but it felt like a loss for me because we've become so used to having these lambs and sheep around on our property and just to see him the poor little poppet laying there it was it was a tough day now I know that for those of you who are watching who are maybe farmers or homesteaders that I think it was Amanda Owen who has the phrase where there is livestock there's going to be dead stock at different times but it doesn't make it any easier in that moment it just was such a sweet little thing so that was a bit of an unfortunate lamb update this week even though we'd had lots of fun with the sheep shenanigans that was um a bit of a blow something that i've had the opportunity to just really relish and enjoy with the drier weather have been the sunrises and the sunsets so I get up every morning at the moment before sunrise we'll see how long that lasts <laughs> as the days get longer and I go and see the chickens and I go for a little walk around the property and oh it's just watching the sun come up over this one hill at the back of the property is just so incredible and it doesn't get old and then at the end of the day we have just been spoiled with the most stunning sunsets Kayvan and I have got into a habit of, and sometimes our daughter will join us and sometimes she won't, you know, <laughs> kids will be kids, <laughs> into the habit of on a Friday and a Saturday evening when the weather's lovely, we'll take our camping chairs outside onto the terrace and just watch the sunset over the lake and it is just everything that I came for. I know that we're living in a caravan and that is challenging and I know that we're a long way off from our 1800 stone cottage being even remotely habitable at this point in time and I don't care because this is what I came for more than the inside it's the outside just that connection with nature and just full immersion in it and appreciation of it and it just feels so nourishing and I feel so grateful because we spent a long time living in a house which was lovely but had a postage stamp garden and really no nature of note <laughs> and I craved it so deeply I craved just being out actually in nature and observing the patterns and ob observing the sky and from our old home in the UK we couldn't ever see the sunrise nor the sunset and I hadn't really been able to articulate that as something that felt missing or something that I was specifically craving until we've come here and I've been able to experience it daily and it's almost like my soul has done a sigh of relief like oh yes this 
I feel like there's just really something in it for us as humans that, that just brings us back to ourselves but also takes us outside of ourselves. I don't know if I can explain it really in a very articulate way but I think you might understand what I mean. You know, we just have this sense of awe and wonder and just some things so much bigger and grander than we are but it also just connects us with that kind of still inner part of us at the same time. So anyway that's just been something I've been wholeheartedly appreciating as somebody who couldn't experience that for a really long time and craved just the that immersion in the outdoors to be here now even in the caravan even in the logistical hardships that that does involve let's be frank it just really does feel like the dream life to me anyway my love i hope you've enjoyed all of these updates and happenings on our homestead and until next time go and soak up a sunset somewhere even if you have to drive to it it is so worth it go and live your dream life bye for now